What's going on YouTube? Kitchen i 3 here with a video tutorial for the Shadow Reverse. Now, I know this is kind of weird that I'm doing this relatively easier trick at this point, considering that, I don't know, I've done a lot of other harder tricks before, but I was scanning through a list of all the videos I've ever created, all the pens being tutorials, and I just realized that I never did the Shadow Reverse. And I think when someone ever asked me to do it, I said it's, I don't even remember what I said. Um, but I remember not making a tutorial for a specific reason, but I don't remember what that was and it probably wasn't a good reason anyway. So I'm going to do this tutorial now since it's well overdue. So this is a tutorial for the shadow reverse. Now, if you guys don't know how to do the normal shadow, go ahead and check out that video on my channel. I do have that and it is decently old, but I still think you can learn from it. Many people have. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. Now the shadow reverse is obviously the shadow but in a backwards direction and this is what the shadow reverse looks like. In concept, like many tricks, in concept it's fairly simple, it's just a shadow backwards, but there are some tricks uh, there are some tricks to it that you should know. Um, first, you'll notice I am using a single-sided mod. Um, this is a signo-tipped MX, and yes, it has a 7 insert, in case any of you guys are wondering what that is. But this is a black RSVP MX, signo-tipped, um, with that insert. So anyway, um, I'm doing this with an um, SC mod because I figured it would help you guys keep track of the revolutions in the shadow, the shadow reverse rather. Um, the normal shadow and the shadow reverse both have 1.5 revolutions in them and you know, using a single sided mod to learn this and also to show this to you guys will make it easier for both you to learn and for me to keep track of it so I can teach you guys a little bit better. So. The shadow reverse starts out just like the normal shadow in terms of where you hold it. So you start off with holding a majority of the pen or the heavier part, in this case the cap of the MX, um, in front of your hand. A majority of the weight or the length of the pen is in front of your fingers with just a little portion of it underneath your hand. So you're doing this whole trick palm down because it is a topspin like trick. and. You're going to start, but instead of doing this forward motion, like I said with the shadow, you're just going to do that backwards. So instead of moving your hand and flicking it forward, you're just going to flick your hand backwards. All right. So this should be relatively simple of an exercise. Just hold the pen and then grip it enough between your index and your middle finger so that it can spin, but not so loose that, you know, it flies off like that. We don't want that. We want control over the pen. So we want to just hold it just ever so lightly so that it does swing back. So here's half a revolution right there. You want to just be able to swing the pen and then have it so that most of the pen is now facing you or towards you. The, again, heavier part or the majority of the pen is facing the opposite direction because again, we just did a 0.5 revolution. Now, when you do the real shadow, you don't hold onto it all the way here. This is just so you can see the half revolution that I'm doing, but what we want to do is we want to give it enough momentum and enough swing, well enough swing so that it has enough momentum, so that when the pen comes swinging in this direction, we want to let the pen go after it's past about one quarter of a revolution. So this is at zero, and this is about quarter, and then this is half. So once the pen goes like here, and then this part, just after it spins past that a little bit, you wanna let go as in, you wanna lift up your index finger just ever so slightly, just enough to let the pen slip through, and then it should end up, by the time it's facing the longer part of the pen or the heavier side is facing you, then this should no longer be within um, the grips of your index and your middle finger. This should be pretty much just well, doing as it as a top spin normally would and spinning on the top of your fingers. So at this point in time, you let the pen spin another almost a half revolution. Um, so here we've almost completed one entire revolution. Remember, we started off here and then we swung the pen backwards, let it go just after it passes a quarter and then the pen gets here 
at half a revolution, and then we just let the pen continue spinning until it's just about completed another half revolution or one whole revolution. Then after that, we lift our middle fingers up and or drop your index fingers down. That essentially does the same thing. What we're trying to do here is just give the pen a spot for it to fall in to catch the shadow reverse. So we have the pen swinging with its momentum. And at this point, I tend to do something weird where I kind of like, I don't even know. I think I raise, I, I kind of do both. I raise my middle finger like this and then um, lower my index finger, but I don't do it individually. I don't go like this. I kind of turn my hand over like this, um, slightly dropping the index finger, but I'm just mainly doing this. See? So instead, the pen is spinning on this very flat plane that's parallel to the surface of the table or whatever surface you're spinning on. And by doing this, if you're spinning on the same flat plane, the pen can now spin into the slot and then you can catch it. Do you see how that works? Um, so hopefully you guys can see that you don't necessarily have to keep your hand flat and then do this. That's, this is an exaggeration, by the way. Um, you can do this if you really wanted to, but my method and I found easiest is that it doesn't involve moving a lot. You just have to turn your hand over and then just ever so slightly dip your index finger down. Now your index finger will naturally come down as you're turning, but it just helps to push it a little bit farther down just so you have a little bit more leeway in terms of catching the pen at the end. So again, let's review. We start off with the majority of the weight in front of the hand, in front of the fingers, away from us. And then we do this, not really back flick, but you know, just do the opposite of how you would start a normal shadow. Normal shadow, you just kind of, you tilt your hand to the right or outside, outwards. Um, if you're left handed, you tilt it to the left. If you're right, you tilt it out to the right. Um, that's kind of like your wind up and then you let it, you swing it across the other direction and then the momentum of the pen will carry it like that. We want to do it the opposite way. If you're right handed, you bring it into the left a little bit, or if you're right handed or you're left handed, you bring it into the right. Anyway, you bring it inwards, um, like this, and then you fling the pen a little bit outward. And after it reaches half a revolution, or not half, after it reaches a quarter revolution, you want to let go. And if you guys want to, you can just practice this. Um, just practice letting it go and letting it fall backwards behind your hand or on top of your hands, even better like that. But we let it go after a quarter of a revolution, and then it sits on top of our hand by the time it reaches half. Then we let the pen keep spinning, but when it reaches almost a full revolution, we want to tilt our hand over like this, and then drop our index finger down just ever so slightly. And that, with the momentum of the pen continuing to let it spin, it will naturally fall into this place. And then once it reaches a whole revolution, as in the pen's pointing pretty much exactly where it started, uh, we slightly pinch our, our um, index and our middle fingers together. And then we let it, we pinch it just ever so slightly enough so that we are holding in we are holding it so that it doesn't fly out of our grips, but loose enough so that it can still spin and complete that extra half revolution to do and finish the shadow reverse. So again, the shadow reverse looks like that. You guys might notice that when I catch the shadow reverse or when I do it, um, my middle finger does something really interesting. I kind of go up like this and then grab onto it like that. That's just something I learned to make it easier. Um, I don't really do this when I'm doing this in a combo, but, or maybe I do, I don't know. I, never, I don't really use shadow reverses in my combos, but um, you can do that too. Instead of just having your hand here and then tilt it and then drop your index finger, I tend to go like this, kind of, kind of like, gah, like you're kind of grabbing it like this. And that's actually what you're doing. Um, the pen is spinning like this, and then you're basically doing this and you can grab it like that. And I tend to grab it like this because this is almost, this is pretty much a surefire way that you have just enough grip to keep it, or you don't even have to have any grip. It can move freely, um, but it can still spin. And then when you catch it like this, it also kind of looks a little bit nifty. So it's a little bit of style right there, but you don't have to do that. Whichever way works, whether you want to dip your index finger down or raise your middle finger up or turn your hand or whatever, do a combination of all those. I think I kind of do a combination of all of those. Um, that will leave you enough room to catch the shadow reverse. So again, we kind of wind up, wind up, as I'm saying, it's not really a wind up, but we're just swinging backwards so that when we swing forward, we'll have a little bit more momentum. 
and this is just kind of a beginner thing, this whole winding up thing. Once you have mastered the trick, you should just be able to hold your fingers like this and then just be able to do it with your fingers. Um, you don't necessarily need as much of a wind up. You don't have to tilt it in this far. That's just if you're starting to learn the trick and start beginning the trick. But after a while, you should be able to just do it with your fingers and just kind of you know move it and it should just go. But of course, this is assuming that you don't know the trick and you haven't mastered it. So you know, do the little wind up thing and then give it a little bit of momentum. You don't really need to flick your hand crazy. Um, the one thing that people have problems with doing shadows, other than the fact that they're not used to releasing the pen, um, as in laying it spin on top of their hand, is the fact that a lot of people just kind of flick the pen like there's no tomorrow. They just go like this and they whip it. You don't want to whip, you don't want to whip the pen because obviously if you let it go like you're supposed to, it'll just go flying off somewhere and then you'll just get frustrated for having to fetch your pen every time. But it's a very light motion. It's as if you were kind of waving at the table. You don't, you don't wave like vigorously. You don't wave like this. You just wave like this. So it's a nice soft and gentle motion. That's one thing, one very important thing to keep in mind when you're doing any type of top spin um, that involves a limited amount of spins. Like if you're doing a shadow and you're trying to get like a record, like a 10.0 spin or something, obviously you need to have a little bit more force. But if you're just doing a normal shadow reverse where you only need 1.5 revolutions, a simple movement of this really lightly is well more than enough to get the pen to spin on top of your fingers and gives it way more in momentum than it needs to complete the trick. So you don't have to worry about overpowering it uh, or un you, don't, you don't have to worry about underpowering it. You should worry about overpowering it. So again, just a quick review. We have most of the pen out in front of us. We kind of wind up a little bit. Again, not necessary if you're more advanced and you can kind of understand where this is going. But when you do this, flick it to the outside. I consider outside the part facing behind your hand. Um, and do this until after it gets past a quarter, then you should be able to let it go by lifting up your middle finger or dropping your um, middle finger. I suggest raising your ring finger because if you drop your index finger, or excuse me, let me try to say that again. I encourage that you lift your index finger instead of dropping your middle finger in this case because the pen is resting on your middle finger right now, as you can see from this angle. Um, if you drop it, that could interfere with the pen's motion and movement. So to let the pen go after about a quarter of a revolution, you should lift up your index finger. And then when you lift it up, you should move it inward a little bit like this so that the pen can sweep over it. And then as soon as the pen clears your finger, um, bring your index finger near your ring finger so that you have a better platform for the pen to spin. When it gets to the half revolution mark, it should be completely without or out of the grips of your fingers. It should be free floating or free spinning on top of your back of your hand and then continuing the revolutions. Here we do whatever feels comfortable for you. Again, if you want to drop your index finger, if you want to raise your middle finger, if you want to um, do a combination of all those three and then tilt your hand or whatever, um, whichever way works, the pen goes under. After it clears the index finger like this, we clamp down on it. I shouldn't say clamp, clamp implies kind of strong. You want to just lightly pinch it and then let the momentum of the pen carry on through the last half of the revolution. So that is 1.5 revolutions for a shadow reverse. And the you can see it's 1.5 because I started with the cap of the MX at the top here, but now it's on the bottom side. Um, when you do this trick, the majority of the pen should be um, out front again, just like that. And so if you want to, you can do a continuous shadow. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do that in this video, but you can do it. That's actually how you're supposed to do it. Um, you do it so that you catch the shadow reverse or shadow if you're doing a forward one um, with most of the weight in front of it so that you could, if you want to do another one or do a continuous shadow kind of thing. So this is my video tutorial for the shadow reverse. Thanks for watching guys. Please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe for more content in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video.